Good morning, ladies. It's Carol Laurie, and we are here today with one more of my wonderful guest experts. And we're here with Thais Harris, who is a functional nutritionist and has a lot of additional skills. So welcome. And would you like to tell the community about a little bit about how you become who you are? Thank you so much, Carol. So good to be here again with you. And um, yes, yeah, so I'm a holistic nutritionist. And, you know, I've worked with cancer patients for many years through Series Community Project, which is a nonprofit providing meals for people that are facing a health crisis. That's wonderful. So at the time I was there, 85% of our clients were actively in cancer treatment. And then I've continued to work one on one with many clients that are either preparing for cancer treatment, going through it, or healing from it. And, um, and those are three distinct phases, right? That's right. I mean, your needs of as someone who is preparing or going through are very different than once you've been through what I call active treatment. And as we all know, it's not over once the bell has been rung, right? That's right. So, yeah, so. and it takes, I feel like some, you know, retraining and above all, which is our topic for today, this connection with deep love for ourselves. And I feel like both from my experience with series and my experience with my private clients, that has never been so um, strong, you know, the fact that this is step one, and it's what we need to then guide everything else that we do. When we connect with a deeper sense of love and gratitude for who we are as we are, um, that can guide our choices in such a beautiful way. And I feel like then there's no going wrong. You know, um, one of the things that I want to offer today is a very brief um, handout on sort of three strategies to getting to deepen that love. And we can talk a little bit about, you know, 10, 13, 15 of them, because there's so much we can right. do. That's great. Right. Um, and just before I got to that, I'd love to just mention that I'm also an author. So I wrote a children's book called Little oh, Red. I love and it's that. It's the journey of an apple. And, and it's really fun. And my aim with my children's books is to get kids excited about fruits and vegetables. So and in the fall, I'm going to be published in, in, um, in a collective of books. And it's called The Life-Changing Power of Self-Love. So uh, in November, that's going to be published. And I'm really excited about it. Okay, just a second. I'm just writing about the story of It's About an Apple. And in November, you're going to be published where? And in November, um, I will be pu published with Sacred Rebel. And that will be The Life-Changing Power of Self-Love. And that's a collective with about 20 writers. And it's a book that has, you know, that theme from the perspective of nutritionists, uh, psychotherapists. Um, there's even a country music singer that's part of this book. It's very exciting. Okay. Um, well, we'll have to have you back in November. Because, Thank you. Yeah, definitely. And when you come back in November, you have to bring the little red book because I think that um, that is wonderful. Yes. And as a matter of fact, just so, since we have a oh, moment, yeah, I'll just show it to you. Guys. Oh, I love it. Very sweet. It's very sweet. And there's even, you know, because it's my book, there's a little recipe at the end and the of benefits course. of apples. Oh, that's great. So how can people uh, find, where can people find that book? Bayes? Oh, so Little Red is available on Amazon. Um, and for people that are in the Berkshires of Massachusetts, all the local bookstores are carrying it. But um, on Amazon, Little Red, the apple who wanted to sparkle. Oh, I love that. And maybe I can also send you a link if we want to put it in the show. Sure. Super. Yeah. And so it's interesting. Today feels very uh, special to be having this conversation with you because it would have been my dad's 75th birthday and he died. May his very... memory be for a blessing. Yes. Thank you. He died of a very aggressive cancer. And so oh. a year after his death, I started working for a serious community project. And that's when my focus in nutrition just was completely geared toward 
prevention and assisting people that were going through it and helping improve, you know, quality of life after um, so treatment. Let's talk about the statement, which is true, which is the standard American diet literally quadruples the cancer rate. And um, food is the foundation of everything, of our health, of our wellness, of how we function and how we're able to function and be in the world. So we have a statement like that. And you and I, I'm sure, are on the same page about how do people need to radically change, radically divorce the standard American diet once everybody in my community has already had a cancer diagnosis. Mm -hmm. um, so prevention is great, but I think that, you know, we need to focus on they've been diagnosed with cancer and they're in different phases of going through treatment and post-treatment, and then they're placed on tamoxifen or aromatase inhibitors, which is a whole other conversation with those side effects. But how can we support women and I with um, learning these new habits and developing this new perspective about how they nourish their, their bodies and their minds? Yeah, and um, I feel like, going back to the love and it may seem like oh it's you know yes we all love ourselves but it's a little bit deeper than that because it's like yeah. how do we really connect and show love to ourselves every day right the way we would show love to a child or a partner so that they really know we care and so letting ourselves know we care and i think when that starts we start making certain decisions so for example the clients at series after receiving our meals and you know we worked with about 450 teens a year who were volunteers in the kitchens preparing the food getting um the vegetables in the garden organic garden you know so they were really learning from seed to table this whole experience about what it takes to feed people and especially with the medically tailored meal uh spin on it too wow and so we would get to meet our clients. And th this was my favorite time to do it was when they would come into the teen circles during our break and the shift and meet the teens that were making their food and, and talk about like, wow, I now have a new appreciation for like eating vegetables, putting more colors on my plate. And because perfect strangers cared so much to make this kind of food for me, like now I'm really excited and motivated to do this for myself. And so sometimes that love comes from the outside in first, right? And then we can generate it. But there are ways in which if we really focus on paying attention, and that can mean a number of things, of course, but first paying attention, how we talk to ourselves, paying attention, like what are our habits? Which ones are serving us? Which ones are no longer serving us? So one of my clients who had a habit of eating like a little pint of ice cream, right? Every time oh. something felt stressful or hard, we really talked about how can you find what is really at the core of that need by just paying attention, loving attention, not the kind of attention that's like, oh my God, I'm doing this again and I'm so bad or this is yeah, so this bad. Is horrible. Or, I'm a horrible person. What's the matter with me that I can't resist, right? Right. And instead getting really curious about what is so satisfying about this. How do I feel after? Does that feeling like linger right because often we feel good for a very short amount of time and then the barrage of of um, negativity criticism, criticism right, right. In. and it keeps us stuck in like that behavior so I feel like when we can really get in touch pay attention so number one and then number two starting to change the narrative like what can change here what can give me that same feeling and so and sometimes it may be that it's you know really colorful fruits and we can Certainly, like fruit is not always the best thing as far as like needing a dessert, but it's better than the ice cream, you know, and then so we go down that ladder of like, what is going to actually give me some nutrients back. And if we think about health as sort of our bank account, how can I make a deposit as I withdraw instead of just withdraw, withdraw, withdraw. Um, so noticing how we talk to ourselves and how we behave and then changing that narrative, replacing some of the negative talk with things that are more hopeful and then growing the capacity to do that daily by, have, by picking one activity that we can do daily that is about growing that love. So at first, 
and I'll, I'll share really quick. I had skin cancer. I had three kinds. And the first one that popped up was right in my face. And it was a squamous cell carcinoma. It was black and big. Oh, and it wow. was right here. So I could not not see it. Every time I looked in the mirror, the first thing I saw was something I considered negative about myself. And I started questioning, like, what is this showing? What is it about? You know, why is Did it? Did you right know it was a cancer? Or did you just think it was some mole or something? At first, I thought it was a mole, and then it was tested. Um, they actually removed it, tested yeah. it. It was a cell, and then it grew back like three times the size it had been before they scraped it off. So I had to begin this process of really looking at myself in the mirror and still being able to say, mm -hmm. hi, Thais, I love you. And this is, you know, I had begun some mirror work before for other reasons, and just sometimes saying I love you didn't feel very authentic or even real some days. And so instead, those days, it would be about, hey, I'm here for you. Like, you will never lose this. And real messages of support, you know, and care. And That's a lot. Whatever. We just have to, I just have to interrupt, because most people don't do that. And most people, I mean, we have to look at the messaging that women get. And, and we get messaging from stupid television and uh, social media and messaging in television for women about self-love is a woman is depressed. And how do we know she's depressed? She's sitting there looking like this or the house is a mess. These are all commercials for antidepressants. Right. And, you know, the one with the house is a mess. What did that mean? There were dishes in the sink. The bed was unmade. And there was piles of laundry. Now, when my child was little, and still, I have sometimes dishes in the sink, the beds aren't made, and there are piles of laundry waiting to be folded, and I am not depressed. So when the first time I saw that commercial, I just started yelling at the television. <laughs> These are, this is the unconscious messaging we get as women. Right. So, and then what's the solution? Of course, you take this pill and the next scene then house is spick and span. Why is it only the woman's responsibility to keep this house clean? Where are the other people who live there to participate equally? What happened to the woman before that made her feel emotionally unwell and unbalanced that she lost her harmony? Mm -hmm. So here you are talking about this wonderful activity of looking in the mirror and saying, I love you. And if you can't do that, because it feels inauthentic to say, I'm here for you. That's a radical concept. Isn't it? And it's, it's so funny to me now that that seems like such a difficult thing. And with working with all the people that I've worked with, it's really hard. And I had a client that cried every time of course. she began because she couldn't feel it at first. And that was a little scary. Like, why don't I love myself? Right. But then it, it's like a lot of little things that you find the message, even if it's like a high five in the mirror. And uh, Mel Robbins wrote a book called The High Five Habit and how it's changed, you know, thousands of people's lives for just giving ourselves some form of positive appreciation when we see our reflection. And it's amazing what that builds inside of us, because as we start believing it, every cell in our body believes it and healing becomes easier. Certain choices become easier. You know, I love this um, metaphor of a chair. If we save up all our money, there's a chair that we absolutely love. It's really artful. And we look at it at the store every day. And then we finally buy the chair. We love this chair. We just want to be in the chair. We're going to keep it inside our house, right? We're not going to put it out in the rain to get ruined. And if it was some weird plastic chair that can be replaced at any moment, sure, we might put it outside and, you know, not take care of it. Just to illustrate that when we really care about something, we take care of it. We don't care. You know, we don't take good care of what we don't take care of. And so really reaffirming every day that like, I care, I care. This is important. I care for my health. I care, I care for me. And what I did with that exercise, and I would look at myself in the mirror and see that black you know, growth in my face was to really start to include it in, in my experience of caring and loving myself. And I would send it light and I would say, yeah, you're beautiful and you're beautiful inside and out, which is another message that I remind myself. And so 
that mold eventually fell off on its own. It literally fell off and it looked like nothing had ever happened. And oh, I still went to a cool. doctor because I had the appointment. And she said to me, we really should dig out a margin um, of safety just to be absolutely mm -hmm. safe that there's nothing else there. So I said, okay. So she dug it out. Now I had, you know, a really big, you know, now I had a scar and the thing for a few days. Um, and the whole sample was clear, which right. was unbelievable, right? And I, I won't say the story doesn't end there because I had other spots in my shoulder and my back, but the learning from that then allowed me to do other surgeries with such peace around it and it was transformative. And so you weren't, the victim, you weren't the victim of having to do the surgery. You yeah. were you were empowered and you were in charge of and you had decided. So the energy behind that is very different than feeling like, oh, I have to do this and I don't want to do it and I'm afraid of it. And that's exactly. part of the preparation, as you and I talk about, of that, of what goes into every step of breast cancer care. Right. And so finding, growing that love, which, you know, like cultivating it with a daily practice, is just one way that it, it then be, it becomes more normal and it becomes your usual response, your more habitual response, rather than the fear response or the judgment response and everything else. And so how do we tie that with food? Well, with the clients at series, again, to bring that example, sometimes people would say, oh, if only I knew this 30 years ago, I've mm -hmm. been eating so badly. And I've been, and mm -hmm. it was like, it would, we would always talk about, please, there's no, there's no shame, blame. Somebody could do everything perfectly right. And cancer could still develop. So it's not, it's not a, um, a reason to feel bad about any of our habits. I feel like wherever we choose to start is again, with the love, then we keep shying away from that shame and just say, Oh, this is how I take care of myself now. Wonderful. This is how I show myself love now. And so things like, you know, I talked a lot to people about cooking more. And I know that that's not always doable when you are in the middle of treatment, for example. But your friends you can, cook. can cook for you. What's that? Your friends. This is when you bring in the village, when you're in the middle of treatment, that's you right. give them the recipes and say, make this for me, please. That's right. And I had a, I had a client that actually did for, you know, because the, she knew from treatment the days that she would not be feeling so well. And then leading up to it, she'd have a little cooking party and freeze a bunch of things uh -huh. that would be ready for the week. And that's, that's, that's great. one way of doing it. Right. Yeah. Because when we talk <laughs> about prioritizing having meals and like cooking from fresh ingredients, not only we know what's in the food, we can put some love into it. As many clients would say, I could feel the love in the food when they were receiving these mm -hmm. meals from the yeah. teens with their little cards. Um, but it, we can do that for ourselves. Like we can, we can send that love to ourselves. And we're talent, we're sending the body the message that I'm worth it. Like, I'm not just going to grab a bar from the store, you know, a little, you know, granola bar. I'm actually going to give myself what it needs to heal. Um, yeah, granola bars are a vehicle for sugar. Right. And sugar feeds cancer. So um, if you can't eat food, you can always grab a couple carrots and celery sticks and cucumbers and uh, radishes and stick them in a jar or a bag and just eat them. That's better than the crudola bar and a, a couple of true. walnuts or um, pine nuts or. Yeah. And sometimes like Arizona. people have trouble with either chewing or metallic taste. So there are yeah. certain spices that can counteract that or making smoothies can be a great and not just fruit smoothies. You know, we yeah, don't want to yeah. make sugar bombs, but um, the replacement actually at first for that pint of ice cream that I mentioned before was just making a smoothie that had like a 
protein quarter, powder, quarter, half a banana in some instances, mm -hmm. and some spinach and a little bit of a protein powder, which nowadays there are so many really great vegetarian ones. And I have um, a proprietary healing smoothie, which is a cornerstone of the work that I do with women. Right. And actually, you don't want to use spinach that often because of the oxalate. Yes. Yeah. So every now and then, but a steam kale is a good substitute. And um, I have them put a quarter to a half cup of either blackberries or blueberries mm -hmm. in there for the antioxidants and the pea isolate protein or the whey powder that I recommend tastes delicious. So great. this has to be, and it also has quercetin, ascorbate powder in it and deribose. So there's very powerful antioxidants in it. Um, which I'm happy to share with you and for you to give to your community. I mean, we, the healing smoothie, I think is taste delicious and mm. I don't want to eat something that doesn't taste good. So I don't expect the people that I work with to eat something that tastes yucky either. So, right. Yeah. And, and thank you for mentioning that. Yeah. With the spinach, obviously oxalate can be a concern. I find that putting a little something green, whether it's basil herbs can be great for That's that. Nice. Like basil basil, great. They don't yeah. have a lot of oxalates. So it's can be an easy substitute. Sometimes zucchini or even cauliflower, it blends really well. And it right. doesn't, you Italian know, Italian parsley is a good addition. Cucumber is a good addition. Something green, steamed kale or chard a little bit, a couple tablespoons. It's great. Right. Yeah. And, you know, maybe some, some cinnamon, turmeric, some of the Wonderful. herbs that we know are very anti-inflammatory and have a lot of other um, healing properties. Mm -hmm. um, and, and this notion of starting to look for like, what boosts my energy? So when we start going back to noticing and paying attention to both how we talk to ourselves and how we are behaving, how we are feeding ourselves is noticing how this food make me feel you know, when I go for the pint of ice cream, how do I feel after? How do I feel the next day? When I have my smoothie and I put all these food boosters, how do I feel then? And I think that noticing with curiosity and with love then really starts the process of like, oh, you know what, today when then you are faced with certain choices, you can go, I'm going to go for this, for this smoothie or for, you know, I'm going to have some nuts and a piece of apple or, um, I'm going to make myself a really nourishing lentil stew, which can be so wonderful, right? I love that. Um, and so, yeah, so these these three, the noticing, the changing, the narrative, and growing the capacity as, as the first step. So then, because then we can look at the what. And I feel like I've I've given, you know, thousands of meal plans to people at this point but yeah. if we don't connect with why we want to do it we're just not going to do it it's just going to sit there in the drawer and so seeing really seeing feeling believing and and so that would be the envisioning part of like where do we want to be how do we envision our healing the way that i would see my face not to deny that you know the the cancer was there but to like really see myself looking at myself in the mirror and feeling happy and feeling content, whether that was there or not. Like that was something I had to envision. And eventually, hey, yay, it's, you know, it's gone. Um, but I really believe in, and Joe Dispenza does a lot of this work. I love Joe Dispenza. He's amazing. And so that- We should just really tell, excuse me, we need to tell the community who, what happened to him because people don't necessarily, we know who he is, but- a lot of people have never heard of him. Joe Dispenza is a chiropractor and he had a traumatic injury and broke his spine to the point where he was told, hi, Joe, you are never going to walk again. Right. Literally, you're going to be a quadriplegic the rest of your life. Goodbye. And that's what they said to him. We're sending you off to rehab. And he said to himself, I don't think so. And he began this process of miraculously using his energy and healing all of these broken connections, right? Mm -hmm. And now he's a totally functioning person, just like you and me. You would never know he had been in a traumatic injury. And he has this whole following of people because he has taken himself to another level and provides meditations for all of us to find that place in ourselves. It's not like 
he's above us and we're below, we are all the same and we can learn what he forced himself. The universe put him in this situation. He could either have accepted what was told to him by the experts mm -hmm. or he could say, no, thank you. And so a lot of what Thais and I are doing and believing is exactly that. No, thank you to what the experts are telling you is your reality. You get to choose and create that for yourself. It's so true. And including us. But I'll just say that if you choose love, even if you think, ah, I don't know about that, there is no side effect. There is no problem here. So try it on because it only, you know, will bring benefit. And so this notion, you know, talking about Joe Dispenza, there's actually a line that I want to read because he said sure. so eloquently, your brain does not need to be a record of the past. It can be a map to the future. That's beautiful. Emotionally embrace your future. That means not waiting for your healing to feel wholeness. Experience your own worthiness before it even occurs. Love yourself to experience love in your life. And I feel like love yourself to experience healing. You know, this is all, it really truly is connected. And if there's one thing that I've learned in 11 years of working with clients one-on-one -on -one, is that if we don't do this piece first, then like I said, the meal plans or the, you know, what to eat, when to eat, how to exercise, like, those things all fall off if we're not every day connected to that, to that love and that, that force that will guide us to then mm -hmm. make the choices that actually feel good to us. Like exercising, doing movement that's joyful, not movement that's punishing. 100%. I, I have a week of in my life group coaching program of creating a healthy and joyful. The phrase here is joyful lifestyle. Because an exercise, a positive movement is part of that. If you asked me to go swimming, uh, it would never happen. <laughs> so I don't like to mess up my hair. I don't want to pee in the chlorine. I don't want to have to travel someplace. And then in the winter, it's freezing. Forget it. Not my cup of tea. But I do my power walks and I lift weights. And if you ask me to ride a bike... I love to be outdoors, but it hurts my rear end too much. So, I mean, and some people love to ride bikes. So I right. want to know what your secret is that your rear end is not killing you. So we have to find two forms of positive movement that create joy for us. Do you like to play tennis? Do you like to ride your bike? What do you like to do? But I also used to skull, which is a mm. wonderful form of exercise. And I want to get back to that again but that involves driving and getting someplace. But um, you can't sit on your rear end and not move and think that you're going to be healthy. And if you're in pain, it's very hard to know where to start. Right. So even five minutes, I mean, the first step is to work with somebody such as myself or Teas to really understand how do we decrease the inflammation that's creating pain. Right. Mm -hmm. And then yes. when you're feeling better, then you can start by walking five minutes, five minutes out, five minutes back. That's how right. one woman started with me. And eight months later, she uh, rode her bike 25 miles, four days in a row to raise money for breast cancer uh, from San That's Francisco amazing. to Los Angeles. Yes. Five minutes. We started with five minutes and she had the couch potato syndrome. The couch potato syndrome is a, word, a phrase that I made up and you can imagine what it is. You feel so bad that you can't get off the couch. So you sit there and watch TV all day because you have so much inflammation. So the beginning of turning down the volume on that inflammation is changing how you eat, right? Yes. And I think too, the other thing that starts happening there is like if you, if there isn't that connection, uh, it's really easy to just want to check out. It's really hard when you have a diagnosis and you don't know what's going to happen. And we now know, you know, just in our whole culture, it's like cancer treatment can be so hard on the body. It's hard. It can have so, such a negative impact in some ways. And it's sure for the good, but like it's, it's, it can be a slog. And so when we just start seeing life as like, oh, I don't want to do this. This is going to be hard. This is awful. I don't feel good. I don't, then it's, it's very understandable that we want to check out and watch stuff on TV, kind of be out of that experience. 
But again, coming back to that love, then we get curious and we're like, what, how am I really feeling? You know, even the notion of having certain affirmations for our body, like my body is resilient, my body is strong, which in any moment that can be true, even if you are in the middle of 100%. a difficult condition, right? And so there are things that we really can tell ourselves that when we start believing it, it makes it easier for them to us to get up and be more interested in our own lives, right? And 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 leave the couch, leave the TV, maybe take a look outside and watch the birds, you know, very small steps, listening, paying attention, and making sure that we are not not overextending the capacity of our body in that moment, but that we are staying curious and connected with it so that we can keep moving it forward and keep enhancing life. Um, I feel like also really the notion of doing it for you. So every time we embark in a health journey, be it when people want to change their diet because of a diagnosis, be it cancer or prediabetes, which is, uh, I see a lot of that uh, these days. It's not amazing. Yeah, it is. It's because huge. it's, I think that, well, we know why let's share with our audience. It's because the um, standard American diet is sugar and carbohydrate and processed food forward and how the standard American diet starts the day. I mean, where it's billions of dollars of advertising thinking that breakfast is this stuff that comes out of a box right. where they've taken all the real nutrients out and they put in some yellow dyes and some red numbers and some mm. God only knows what other phrases of chemicals. And you're supposed to eat cardboard and then you put cow's milk on it. Right. Or you have a scone made with tons of sugar and some kind of frappy coffee drink. I mean, that is the beginning of everybody developing diabetes. Yeah. And unfortunately, we're told that we deserve it, right? It's like even the, the way that we're marketed to. I have countless examples of magazines with like the Milano cookies or whatever the, you know, not yeah, to yeah, say yeah. about any brand, but it's like, you deserve it. Stressful day. Here you go. Oh, um, the Dove little chocolate things where they have a woman. It's only women who are eating these little chocolate bites. And she has a bite of this Dove chocolate. And then it looks like she's, you know, in ecstasy. And it's like, <laughs> come on. Why? I mean, and then the men are obese and the men are, eating this hamburger with the junk dripping out. They have big stomachs and that's an advertisement for Tums. Wow. So yeah. this is the messaging that we get as Americans, which is why diabetes and cancer are rampant mm -hmm. and um, people are dying. And Philadelphia, I don't live in Philadelphia anymore, but it's my hometown has mm. the highest rate of diabetes for African American children in the country. And that's so is, sad. It's very sad. And that is because those neighborhoods don't have access to real food. So they go down to the junk, you know, 7 Eleven or whatever it is, and they buy chips and some burrito or something, or they eat 99 cents at McDonald's and they're not getting any live food and they become obese and they get diabetes. Yeah, I remember seeing a line that said, it's not the food, it's not just the food in your life, it's the life in your food. And I love right. that because it's so yeah. true. Like, not only are people getting things that are way too sweet um, and eating sometimes, you know, the whole grazing all day long and keeping their insulin high all the time. Like, there's just a lot of different ways in which um, we're not supporting health. And then when you're lacking the nutrients that counteract that, all the anti-inflammatory nutrients, all the omega-3s, the healthy fats, that's when the, the scales really tip. And so when, when people come to me to like start a new way of eating and thinking of their day and their lifestyle, um, creating new practices that really fit into their lives and that they can do in a way that feels a little more effortless than what we're told to do with the like, you know, go for a run and whatever, eat perfectly. It's um, this notion of just connecting with doing it for you. It's like, we're not doing it for an image persona of like how I should look like. We're not doing it because our mother's told her so we're not doing it to please our partners. We're not like, I'm doing this for me. And so I think when, especially during treatment, you know, finding the things that you really bring you joy. I love that you brought the joyful piece in that. It's like really do it for you. And so 
figure out what are the foods. I always have my clients make a list of the foods that, that feed them both biologically, physically, and emotionally. Because I'm like, if there are foods that we can tie those two things that are really good for you, up your energy, right? Don't interrupt your sleep. Don't mess with your blood sugar. Um, and that you really love and that you feel good eating. Like we start there. Let's do the things that really, you know, boost what you love first. Then we start looking at like, what do we need to remove? What other boosters we need to put in or supplements? And I, I work with, I use DNA reports and labs. Mm -hmm. um, right. But first a big questionnaire, because I feel like it's really about people's experience in their body. Like each one of us is the expert in our bodies. That's and like, right. let's not ever forget that, right? And then we go for like all this data to really find like, what's the priority here? Like, where do we start? Because you can always start at a million places when we're talking, you know, diet and, and lifestyle. And so we do this, you know, do it for you. Work with connecting with love, with seeing, believing, envisioning where you want to be so that naturally all your cells believe it, which is why I brought up Joe Dispenza, because he talks a lot about this, how we can rewire our brain with the quote that I read that allows us to see where we want to be. And then we start acting like that person that we want to be. So we start acting like the person that's feeling whole and healed um, and doing it for ourselves and then ditching perfection, knowing that we're never going to get it totally right. And perfection is not the goal, just progress. Again, if we connect with love, if we have affirmations, like I said before, I'm strong or even one that I love as of late that I've used a lot recently because I had some stressors was, I am infinite. And gosh, just having that thought immediately put everything into perspective. You know, right. it's like, ah, abandon the small stuff. Um, and yeah, so save and then savoring life, you know, every moment is precious. I know when we have a diagnosis that becomes so apparent and so clear. Mm -hmm. So enjoying food, eating slowly. That's another thing, because then we're, we're not going to overeat if we're really savoring, really taking our time to chew putting the fork down between bites. There's so much that we can do to help our nutrition without actually even talking about the specific foods, right? You know, I have uh, my daughter just gobbles the food as if she's, if somebody's taking it away from her. And I keep saying, slow down, slow down. Um, it could, because you need to, put it in your mouth and savor the bite and chew it and then swallow it and then talk to the people you're having your meal with. If you're eating, take a breath and then go on to the next bite. And when you do that, you get full much more quickly. Right. And you let all the messages in the body from the, because we start digesting in the brain, actually, if we even, if anybody listening right now closes their eyes and just thinks of their favorite food, you might notice we start salivating. Salivating. The brain yeah. is already sending so many messages yeah. to like, yeah. get ready. Yeah. Um, and when we eat slowly, we really allow the time for all the communication to happen, for all those enzymes to be released, for everything to work in a much better way. And so, yeah, savor, savor, savor and flavor. Add, add those flavors, those um, spices that are anti-inflammatory and... Um, and then look at how food really makes you feel because something, for example, avocado, I have a client who's allergic to it, right? What's right for one person is not right for everybody else. So coming back to the noticing is really key. And then of course there are general guidelines, Carol, like you were saying, standard American diet, we kind of got to break up with it. Divorce, and I call it divorce. It's <laughs> even more serious than break up, it's a divorce. <laughs> yes. And then really go into, really go forward toward the foods that really help you feel good and that you know are fresh, are whole. So whether whole grains is a part of the diet, for some people that works, for some people they have to kind of really limit them. But yeah, if I'm not a big carbohydrate and fruits, person. What's that? Not a big carbohydrate person. Yeah. Free. Some of them are okay, but... It takes a while to move people from not so many carbohydrates because that's what everybody thinks they should be eating and that's what they're used to. But ideally, it's a smaller spot it's, on the plate. 
Yes, it's much smaller than most people would imagine. And I feel like that's where meal planning really helps. And I have a brand new service that I'm launching this week, actually, that it's eight weeks of meal plans. Great. And some have very restricted carbohydrates. Some have medium, depending on where people are now to like then come down, you know, so there's definitely a, a, a titration period. But um, it can be really nice. I would actually you know, recommend that people, even if you make your own, but making that plan is another way that you tell yourself, like, you're worth it. I love yourself. Let's plan some meals, have foods in the fridge that are ready to support you so that we don't find ourselves running to the, ca the coffee shop or, you know, grabbing things like bars or whatever processed things that we can keep mm -hmm. in the cupboard. If we really shop for fresh foods and we have a little plan for the week, in those moments when we're exhausted, and we can't even think of what's for dinner. It's like, it's okay. It's already there. You already had a plan. You already have it mapped out. Great. Um, <clears throat> way to invest in your future, beautiful, happy, healthy self. Beautiful. So, Teus, how can people find you? So, you can find me at Nourish Together. That's the name of my practice. And that's www.nourishtogether.com. And I... There's a lot of information there about me, what I do, and how to work together. Um, I am currently living in the Berkshires in Massachusetts. I used to live so nice. in San Francisco, Bay Area. And so I see people here in person, but mostly I see people online through Zoom. Me too. I still work with people all over the country. Yes, it's the beauty of Zoom, of what we do. I mean, there are women all over the U.S. and beyond. I have people in Australia, New Zealand, and Europe. <laughs> that I consulted. Wonderful. So, so thank you so much for being here and sharing your, it's a very unusual perspective. And I think it's very heartfelt and it's very real and it's very healing. So thank you so much for being here with the community and sharing yourself and your beauty and ladies reach out. Thank this you. has a lot to offer all of, all of us. Okay. Thank you, Carol. And I definitely want to hook up with you around your supplements and your um, uh, smoothies. So let's definitely talk about that. So stay Thank here you. for a minute when we end and we'll continue our conversation. Ladies, it's Carol Laurie. We're signing off for now. Thank you for watching. And I hope you really enjoyed this beautiful guest expert conversation. And there'll be more later. Have a lovely day, everyone. Bye.